Happy Sunday, everyone. And here we are back at uh, my backyard and ready to do some different drills today. So, uh, but first of all, first of all, thank you, Eddie, uh, taking the time to do these and uh, always appreciative of you. Uh, but pleasure. also have to say a big, oh, thank you. And then uh, next, uh, we got to thank uh, our sponsors, uh, my sponsor, Prince Pickleball, and uh, also Pickleball Central, who have partnered up uh, to give away uh, paddles. Uh, we gave a paddle away to Heidi uh, last uh, feed. And then uh, today we're gonna be giving away a paddle at the end of the stream as well. And how do they, what, how do they qualify for this, Eddie? That's a great question. Uh, so if you share this live stream, then you're gonna be eligible to win a free Prince paddle. So go ahead and share that. And I did wanna remind you as well, that you can use coupon code Simone20 for 20% off any Prince paddles at either pickleballcentral.com or princepickleball.com. Good until April 30th. So definitely check that out. Awesome. Okay. So are we ready to go? Are we ready to do this? Let's do it. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay. So today, what we're going to be doing, as you guys can see, uh, Chad put together uh, this old tape. Uh, taped up uh, letter and you can do it also with um, uh, I mean I, we didn't we didn't want to do have the pool uh, but you can also do with chalk uh, and all it is is just uh, again you have what do we do what is the measure 15 feet uh, 20 inches apart 18 inch boxes and you can see he's very very particular about the measurement uh, so anyway so we're gonna do be doing uh, a mixture of uh, hitting against the wall and then also doing a little bit of cardio agility drills. Uh, so the first one we're gonna do is a little bit of a warm up, and I put my list together here. Uh, and what we're gonna do is I'm actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it with the paddle in hand. Uh, so the first one that we're gonna do uh, pretty much is just uh, you can lead with the right. It's just one foot in each box. What happened? Whoops, I'm moving back again. Okay, so so again, just uh, the little warm up, one foot in each. Okay, so that's it. And you can go fast. And then the next one, I'm going two in each. So one, two, 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 and then out. Okay, and then the next one, we got high knees. And again, it's the same way. So I'm going one in each. And then in the way back, I'm doing, and you can speed it up as you progress, two in each. Okay, so again, and you do this for your warm up. All right, put my ball over there. Okay, then we're gonna go to the wall because uh, I'm gonna be going be going back and forth. The first one I'm gonna do 50 hand target. I made a small target. If you want to make it bigger, I don't know if Chad can get the target yes. oh awesome okay so again i got my kitchen line here with the wall and i'm going 50 to that target and every time i get it i got my little wall so I'm good Two, three four and again i'm not gonna go to 50 today but you guys got the gist of it so that way you guys can do it at home and I'm focusing on not taking any big swings. So all of my touch, the more control I have, the better. Breathing throughout. Got my pavers to keep me on my toes. Okay. And once I get 50, and I, you're not looking to do in a row 50 on your target. Once you get those 50, uh, then uh, we go on next one. Um, I'm back to the, the letter here and sorry, I wrote this down. So we got the side twist and I'm going to lead it with my right leg. So what it is, is that I'm using my core and I'm twisting in, in and out. And then I go back with this one. And again, if you want to, so 
the, the better you get, you can go, you go faster, go through it. Same thing on the way back. And let's see. Okay, so this one, we're gonna go right foot in and out. So we're not, now we're not twisting, we're just gonna go here. And again, faster if you can. And then left foot leads. And if I can do it again, there you go. Make sure you're bending your knees. These you should be working on being Of your feet and, your, and you can do these several times if you want like taking it through to a circuit um, then now we go to 50 back ends 50 back ends to the target Whew, this is gonna be as you get three Gotta make sure I hit the right paver. And again, these should be with soft grip. This ball should not be coming too fast at you, trying to grab that ball. Oh, bending those knees if you can. If you have problems with your knees, get your base a little wider. Not bending your back, preferably. Definitely don't want to soar back on this one. Okay, so then once you get those 50, and again, like I said, I'm not going for 50 in a row here. Not just yet. We're going for 50 on that target, however big you want to start. Of course, the smaller, the more difficult. And Eddie, just for a second, anybody have any questions while I move on to the next one here? No questions, but I will tell you that uh, Joe Ann Pagano Susco said, gosh, you make it look so easy. Just love it. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Now the next one. Uh, so this is a little bit more difficult as we progress with the letter work. Uh, and again, sorry. So now actually we're going to go on the side shuffle. So when we go and did I do this right sideways in and so we're going to go, uh, so we're going to face that way and we're going to actually, I think I didn't do skipping one, but we're going to skip a box. So when we go, we go here and then get out and we skip a box. Okay. On the way out. And then this one, we got uh, forward in and out. And again, this is going to be a little bit more uh do I even remember what these ones are? That's good. Uh, is it this one? No. I don't remember now. Sorry, my bad. And then, okay. Yeah, it's harder for me too. And again, honestly, there's a ton of these online. Uh, I used to do these a long time ago. And they are great for agility and footwork. And they do burn. And again, you can do it as fast as you want on these. Uh, okay, now we got, so this one again, is, it gets a little harder as we go. We're gonna go 50 dinks, and this time I'm gonna go, it's almost like I'm making a figure eight with a wall. So my dink is gonna go diagonal, which then the ball is gonna come back to my back end, and then I'm gonna go diagonal with my back end. So I'm gonna make a figure eight with the wall. So same thing, I'm looking for 50 boxes. Oh, maybe, maybe I can. Definitely a lot harder. And again, don't panic if you feel like you're chasing balls at the beginning. It's probably because you're swinging a little too much. 
Just stay in control of your body. Oh. Focus on that contact point out in front. Softening up those hands. And I'm not rushing. One thing that we notice a lot is that people, when they're trying to hit a dink, they rush to hit that ball. Here, I'm really oh, working on my precision. So I really need to take my time to hit that ball. As you can see, I'm only going forward, really. If I hit a short and I need to go, but for the most part, I'm letting that ball come to me and taking my time with it. So again, forehand diagonal, back in diagonal. And man, I can do this all day, I love it. This is good therapy too. <laughs> me and the wall. Me, the wall, and the ball. All right. So again, I'll do 50 targets. It might take you a little while, but it'll be great. Honestly, it's a great, great therapy. Okay, now, this used to be one of my favorites. Uh, it's the Iki Shuffle. Um, and from my understanding, this was named after like a football player. Uh, and again, this is all footwork. Uh, and it's extremely, extremely, um, you got it, you got it coordination wise. I think that's one of the hardest things, but I'll do it slowly first. So the right foot goes in and then goes out. And then here, so in, out, in, out. And as it started to accelerate, see how the middle leg always stays in. So I'll do it again here. So this leg going here, Okay, and again, as you get better, this is so much fun. Go faster with it. And as you can tell, this was my favorite. Okay, so again, uh, you kind of, at, at the beginning, you're gonna have to try, figure out how you do it. Uh, and then as you get better, you speed it up. Uh, I used to have players that would do it they, because we actually had ones with the rope and then it would all mess up. So uh, just make sure that you guys focus on doing it right first and then uh, get the speed. Then it gets a little tougher because you're gonna do the same thing, but now backward and it's so important that you pick up your feet, okay? So again, okay, again, don't speed it up before you're ready. Make sure that your chest is up. Don't lean too back. Okay, and again, speed it up as you go. All right, we good so far, Eddie? I have some questions if uh, if you're interested here. Absolutely. All right. So <laughs> the first one is, and we've had a couple of these, uh, and that is. How big is the target box? Um, and we've also had some questions about how big are each of the, the squares in the ladder as well. Can you go over that again? Yes. So hold on because I need Chad's help here. So first of all, my target on the wall, I made it pretty small. Uh, but you can make it as big as you want. I wouldn't go high. But you can go to all I'm Brazilian, so what kind of this many centimeters from here to here? What's that? <laughs> what is 20 centimeters? Matt, any anybody that knows math? Uh, yeah. So no, it wouldn't be a foot. It's like maybe. Yeah. So I, this is what I have here. So I made this being my target on forehand and backhand. Like I said, if you want to make it bigger, I would go a little bit to the side this way, maybe a little bit up. But this is kind of the way I, I wouldn't go too high here. Um, and just so you know, that target over there, that's uh, Landon's baseball practice box, not for pickleball. Uh, so I would go uh, as high, maybe like a foot 
and uh, and then maybe do a foot like that. I think that would be pretty good target on both sides. And like like I said, uh, stick and then work to a smaller target. Always better that way. Okay. And then the boxes here. Uh, like I said, uh, Chadwick did this much more perfect than my boxes over there. You see the difference there. Uh, <laughs> on these, it's 15 feet long. And then each box is inch, 18 inches and then 20 inches wide. And we multi-purpose the kitchen line. Is, if you remember, this is my kitchen line, which is set from my wall. Is that, is that good? And yep, how that you definitely did it. answered I mean, the question we have... here. Um, we have another question, though, and that is from Colin Smith. And Colin wants to know, Simone, when dinking, are you using a continental grip? Yes, I am. Both forehand and backhand. The same as I do for my volleys. Okay. Uh, another question here from Audrey Bamberger. It says, I know the ladder drills work. How are you controlling yes. your breathing? Um, I mean, because I'm talking, then I'm struggling a little bit. But if I was to do it without talking... So a lot of the times, so, so I'm exhaling, so I'm gonna try to do it without talking. So what I'm doing, and as you can see, I go to, to the icky one because it's my favorite. Uh, a lot of the times I'm just taking regular, trying to take regular breaths, not deep breaths or short, uh, just trying to keep my regular breath, uh, but definitely going in and out. Uh, when I do the whole thing, I probably took four. Uh, so, uh, if you wanted me to be more precise, I would say probably in and out every two. Yeah, definitely. So it's not like I'm not, you know, gasping for air, but I'm not going like, you know, six in, six, in. it's just kind of quicker. For sure. For sure. That like, if you go faster and you do it more then for sure it's going to be your your breath is going to be a little bit shorter because you're going to be a little out of breath if you push yourself really hard. So which Audrey can do it? All of you can do it. So and again, these are uh, to me is something that you can do. Uh, you can take yourself twice through it. No problem. Uh, because again, I don't want you, I, rather than just going and doing it and like you're you know, you exhausted after, just start nice and slow, work on progression, always better that way. Anything else? We move on to eight here. Just a lot uh, of compliments to you, eight? but uh, I think we're ready to move on to the next drills. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so, so the volleys, um, I... I always think of like, so now with my target, I'm actually going to focus on my volleys being where my targets are. Uh, and I'm going to just stick to those 50 volleys and I'm going, I'm, I'm not like right now, I just want to think being ready in my ready position. So again, I'm not hitting them. Oh my goodness. I'm not hitting them super low. Like I was hitting the dinks. Sorry. We actually lost you there for a minute. Simone, uh -oh. I don't know if you were saying anything in the Whoops. last 20 seconds or so. Nope. I was just focusing uh, on that one. If I can talk and do that at the same time, that would be uh, a skill that I'll try to develop. Uh, so I wasn't talking. <laughs> uh, did you get it? Got it. Oh, man. Yeah. So that is a lot harder because you got to really focus. And that ball is actually... Uh, sometimes I know the video uh, doesn't show how fast it's coming, uh, but it is actually quite, I'm trying to go fast from that kitchen line. Uh, so again, my focus is to ke you know keep my eye on that ball. Um, but there is one thing that I know a lot of people ask, and can you hear me? 
We got gotcha. you. Make sure that you don't lose me again. Uh, one thing that a lot of people ask if I'm watching through, like through and through, uh, it's really hard to do that. A lot of the times I am watching the ball, but if you can see, I'm actually keeping it more peripheral versus tunnel. Because if I was to do that, by the time I lift my head up, the ball is already going to be coming back to me. So if, you know, and I know that um, if you have the chance to watch yourself play, uh, and I'm talking about you, anybody out there, uh, to watch yourself play. And uh, reality is that a lot of the times we don't really watch the ball all the way through the paddle. It's again, it's a really hard thing to do. Is it in my peripheral vision? Absolutely. Because again, I need to make sure that I know where the ball is going. But a lot of the times, the more skilled you become, the more you're going to be able to stay peripheral. Okay. Does that make sense? I know that we'll get questions about that. We do have a few <clears throat> questions if this is a good time for it. Yeah, absolutely. Got Great. a couple more. So one of them is coming from uh, Roncav8. They want to know, what do you think about using the quiet ball, especially because they do no damage? Um, I think you can, honestly, in my opinion, foam ball. You can use foam balls, especially because I know some people, that's, uh, and again, a foam ball is from tennis, um, but they, they will have any, any other, like online, you can find it. Uh, they usually, that's how they teach kids how to play tennis, uh, which makes no noise whatsoever. Uh, so for those of you who maybe are in a neighborhood or in an apartment, in a condo or somewhere where uh, you're not going to be able to make that much noise, uh, luckily uh, my neighbors have not complained yet, uh, but I am, we are kind of somewhat further away from each other, so I'm very lucky. On yeah, on yeah, much easier with a foam ball for sure. Um, I don't have a microphone. Sorry, so, sorry. So, uh, so, so, anyways, so the 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 foam ball probably will be a little easier to control uh, on a on a wall, but but nonetheless, honestly, you can use any ball that you want uh, as long as that's what's gonna work best for you. Uh, like I said, I just like for me, it works okay. Um, the the biggest thing for me is that I have pavement here, so. Um, it's a little bit tougher because of the fact that uh, pavers, sorry, pavers, which again, when the ball bounces, I have no idea where it's, go where it's going. Uh, if you can do it where um, the surface is flat on the ground, uh, much better. Okay. Got another question here from Joan McNally. It says, do you, do you use your other hand for balance when dinking? Uh, yes, um, there is, you know, my whole life I've always used uh, for anything that I've done, um, you know, with my tennis background, but I believe that any sport, a, lo a lot of the times for balance, I think it's important, but also because of the fact that I do have a two-handed backhand, so a lot of the times my hand will automatically go to the handle, but I know even when I'm hitting volleys, that this arm still stays. It's natural to me. It's very unnatural if I was to have this arm down. Um, I, I probably don't even know how to do it, to be honest. Um, but that is many, if suits many, for, for me, I just feel that is the natural way. And again, uh, because of the tendency that I have of taking it, my, taking my hand to the handle. Uh, but absolutely, even when I'm thinking with the one hand, as you can see, that will usually that I'll have this arm up like that. Um, sometimes, you know, the arm will actually go up this way, depends on um, where it, my body feels like it needs to be to keep me in balance. So that's a great question. Good. Got another one and here I know that's from something Gail for Eddie to work on. And Gail asks, hi, Simone. This is Gail from Chicago. Can you please tell us again the height of the line on the wall? Uh, so, so you can do, you can do two ways. So the, 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 the middle of the kitchen is 34, but the size is 36 inches. So if you want, you can make it like, you know, you can actually imitate the, the, the uh, height of the net to do it a little lower, the, the middle, and then put the tape up a little bit more. Uh, or if you want, you can do maybe, a, a, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. So, so, and the other thing too, honestly, uh, if you are lucky enough that you have a net, uh, which again, we're getting a net uh, because you can actually use the net on the wall and then you don't even have to worry about taping and you know exactly where you are. Uh, because again, with the tape, if I hit the net, um, you know, it, it, I, I don't know, but with the net being there, I'll probably, it's going to give me that feedback right away. But I would recommend, um, you know, if you want to be very precise, you can have 34 in the in the middle and then going uh, in an upward gradually going up upward to 36. All right, that's all the questions we have for right now, but appreciate everybody okay, sending perfect. those over. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so this one uh it is a pretty fun one. Uh it's the bunny hop and again, uh I'm focusing on not on the tippy toes, but I'm going to go on the balls of my feet. And this definitely works your quads, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, and then, uh, sorry. Uh, and this one, I think I'm going this way. So now, And again, sorry, I'm not talking on these, but now leading. Hey guys, looks like we lost them there for a second. Hopefully their uh, internet's going to pick back up here. We can get them connected. So hold tight. We'll see what we can do to get them right back up here. Are you, are you there? We are back. Yes. Yeah. It looks like we dropped you there for a second, right when you were, uh, just finishing up the bunny hop. So I don't know if you want to start, uh, with. Okay. The, okay. So uh, the drill right after that. Sorry. Sorry. So, uh, so the, the next one is you going pretty much as a six foot count. So two in, two out, and I'm using the whole thing now. And then when I go back, I lead with my left foot. And again, that is a good leg burner. No doubt about that. Then the last one that we're going to do is that we're going to bring it all together. And this is for you. You're not competing with me. Compete with yourself. It's for you to do, see how many in a row you can do actually hitting the target. So you might start with five. That's all you can do at the beginning. So I want to hit my target. And let's see if I can focus here. So let's see how many I can do. Two. Six. Seven. And I'm for my. Uh -oh. are you still there yeah we lost you for a second but we have you back again shoot i'm sorry everybody i don't know if it's just the day the internet is going uh so did you get the part where i'm going for 10 well not 10 i'm going for as many as i can in a row with the forehand dig to my target. Are we yeah, good? we were able to get there. And then it looks like next you're going to be uh, going on to backhand dinks. Is that right? Yes. So then we'll go to the backhand. And I'm doing, again, same thing. I'm trying to see how many in a row. Maybe zero was my in a row. Uh, and again, I'll feed it with the forehand. Okay. Wow, that's zero. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and that's it. Six. So that's what I'm starting with. Okay. And then I'll work my way up from there. Uh, with the volleys again, uh, 
do that target there and you're doing you're going for the same thing how many in a row you can do and however many you can just, oh and i'll stop here uh but at any rate this is for you to kind of keep track if you want to take notes of it i think it's a great way to keep track of to, to have improvement uh i think for for all of us if we just do it without actually having a goal um, I think that's the part where it gets harder. Um, I think mentally it's good to always have goals and then that way um, you can start to work from there. Uh, and let's say you do it again two days from now and you say, okay, I got five the first time, now the second time I'm gonna go, you know, 10 and then and kind of go up. And if you don't get it, then you try again uh, and so on and so forth. And then again, remember we can start with the boxes bigger uh, and then as you improve, you go to a smaller box. Um, I just think that that is a great way. Okay, I can see improvement because I think there's there's something to be said about setting goals and achieving them as well. So, and and again, the um, love to talk about goals. Um, I think I think that that's one of the mental aspects of you know anything that we go through in life, but especially now is so important. So set some goals and maybe we'll have a whole session about that so and that awesome. was that well we definitely had a couple more questions if you don't mind taking a second to answer those simone absolutely absolutely all right so one of them is uh let's see from jane huang when dinking or volley yep. against the wall how can you ensure your hand is back up in the ready position or is it not possible yeah, I think it is. I think one of the things that I talked about, it was when um, we, you know, uh, we become a little tunnel uh, by we're looking at the ball come all the way through. And then by the time it leaves our paddle, we're, we're, we're too, almost like a second too late. So I would focus on, um, there are several drills, actually, I'll add another one, um, which is a little bit, I know, unorthodox. What are the whoops hit the ball uh but there is something to be said about um i love sport analogies that's one of my favorite things to do uh and i always use uh the quarterback one uh but the best quarterbacks are the ones that they are they are very much um peripheral versus tunnel uh, they are not looking at the ball, leave their hands uh, when, or just looking at only one person on the field. And trust me, I do not, I don't know much about football at all. But the the tunnel part is that if you focus on only one player out there, and if he's not open, what is going to happen? You're going to end up throwing an interception. Uh, or if you um, are focused on only the uh, what is it called? <laughs> this is my football analogy. The people coming at you, the defenders trying to, uh, oh my gosh, you. there you go. Uh, so, so just think about, you have to be aware of the whole situation, the whole field, looking at all the players that are out there, who is open, what's going on, who is coming at you. Uh, and I think that that's improving that uh, is a big part of the game as well. So one of the ways that I like to, to work that um, is that you actually, don't watch the ball um, other than actually w work on watching the wall. So you're not, um, I'm just look looking, and again, it's gonna be super hard at the beginning. I cheated there, uh, but I am focusing on watching, just trusting my hands and my instincts a little bit. And again, I had to cheat. And every now and then that ball is gonna get out, but I'm now really focusing on that wall and looking, working a little bit more Again, this is not something that you're going to do. But just so you know, a lot of the times when you're talking about uh, misdirections, like hitting an inside out even, a lot of the players are not watching the ball come all the way through the paddle uh, or they are looking the wrong way. We've seen that. We cover that with Joey. Uh, and so that comes just that instinct that they know the ball is coming and they trust that it's going to be there. But for a lot of a lot of players, is that they are so used to watching that ball through and through. And again, it is the 
it becomes a habit, but it's somewhat something that you have to train yourself. Uh, I can think of, um, you know, many other sports where you become so aware uh, of your body and the ball in relationship to your body that it's something that happens much more organically than forced. Oh, I thought that, that, sorry. So, so I totally, I so sorry. Again, yeah. Sorry. Was about keeping the paddle up. How do you get the so, paddle so up? Jane, I know I probably did not answer. I thought it was something else. Probably did not, not even answer your question. Uh, so what was the question again, uh, Eddie? Chad is saying that is, I, uh, when dinking or volleying against the wall, how can you ensure your hand is back up in the ready position or is it not possible? Oh, but that goes with it a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so then, so then again, just, uh, what I, where I was going with that is just that try not to focus on so much falling that ball all the way in. So that way, when you hit your, the ball is already going to come back. So your paddle is not going to be back right in position. So just fall, follow the ball. But again, just be ready when you, when you follow through, you just then again, your eyes already back at the ball and you should help in a way to speed up that, that process of being ready. Uh, because again, the relationship I was saying, how watching that ball, and then by the time I go like this, the ball is already going to be back at me in order to catch that ball. So so maybe get more used to yeah, just trust, trust the follow through. through. Yes. The yeah. I think that that's where I was going. Sorry. That's good stuff. Uh, we have a question here from Michael Miller. It says, do you ever incorporate resistance bands, TRX, or kettlebells into your workouts? And what is your favorite cardio? Uh, so to be honest, I haven't, and again, not going to lie, I haven't lifted weights in a long time. Uh, I don't, um, I don't enjoy it. I don't like it. And I, it's not for me. Uh, so that is, again, if he's asking me, uh, the things that I like to do is anything that is non resistance. Uh, I mean, I've been, uh, I've been on that, like I've done weights in college. I did that for a long time and I never enjoyed it. So I, when, when I think when I, you know, uh, started coaching and, and I started doing the things that I enjoy doing, uh, because if I was going to work out, I was going to do something that I like doing. Uh, so a lot of the times I will do anything free weight, anything that you can do with weights, you can do free weight. Uh, of course, I love sit-ups. Um, I know it's crazy, but I always have. I like to do sit-ups. Um, I just, you know, when I, like now that I, I have time, uh, I've done a lot more of that. Uh, doing um, like lunges, uh, making sure that, again, I always believe that the biggest thing, especially when you're home and not with a trainer or anybody, is making sure that you have the right technique. Uh, the little that I know, again, I'm not an expert at all, but the most important thing that I learn is do any kind of exercise where you're doing um, uh, or a squat that your knees are not going past your toes. That is very important that you're actually dipping down uh, with your bottom. Um, so I like stuff like that. Uh, I've been on this thing about running. Um, and again, uh, kind of extremely sore today, actually, uh, just because I found that it's been very helpful and uh, therapeutic. I can't say the word therapeutic. Uh, so just kind of clear my thoughts a little bit. Um, again, uh, just kind of set some goals. So like I go for a run like yesterday, um, Landon, uh, our six year old, I wanted to go for a bike ride and I was like, perfect. Okay. He put him on the bike. And we just ran around the neighborhood and nobody's out. Um, so we just uh, kind of went out and I ended up running for um, quite a, you know, like a light jog um, for a solid 30 minutes. So that was good. And I, again, it made me feel good. Uh, when I got home, I was like, wow, I accomplished something, uh, which I think, especially right now, is something very important. Feel like you're accomplishing something productive every day. Uh, I highly, highly recommend whatever that is. So. Awesome. All right. And then Margaret Dunbar wants to know, 
uh, if there's a way to be able to get a written form of these exercises. Are you familiar with a place where these are listed or anything? So for the, for the, the, I mean, honestly, if you want, uh, Eddie, I know it's my, my handwritten, uh, you, if you want, I can type it up or, or like Eddie, you can literally post it like how I, I have it. I, I, I'm, I'm a writer. I like to write everything down, uh, but I can type them up and we can put it, um, we can put them online as well. Absolutely. I'm happy to, to post the pictures in the Facebook chat here after the stream is over guys, if that, that'll help you. Yeah. And if they can't, if they can't read my, I mean, I actually took, I, I really was really good about my writing so you could read it. Uh, because usually my writing is like, I, I'm a doctor, but I'm not a doctor. It's like a reading prescription pretty much. All right. And we have one more question here. And this is a very serious question from none other than Deckel Barr. And Deckel says, question, Ooh, Deckel. what will it take to get you to jump into the pool after this? Oh my gosh, Deckel, really? Every, every, every live oh, why do they really want that? Really? Oh my gosh. Hold on. Then I have to like, okay, here's the deal. Hold on. I'm making a deal. Is he still on? Deco, are you there? Here's the thing. So if I jump in the pool, here's what they, the, he's going to do. I, I want to see him do all the drills. The first one, the first video and the second video here all at once and i want to see like he could no cheating no stopping all of the cardio, all of the cardio. is he Deckel in? said yes okay <gasps> oh sucks. sucks i don't have anything valuable Everything is in. Bring it. She said, "Bring it." That's fantastic. Thank you, Simone. I believe that's oh, it no, for no, all no, the no, questions no, that are no, out there right no, now. What are they you can, you can that's it for all of the questions that are out there right now. Can just hold it in. You can talk into the microphone. Oh, no. You can just talk into the microphone. Oh, just hold it and talk into it. So, oh. Say bye. Bye, everybody. And thanks, Deco. Love ya. Oh, the dog.